First time I've worn pants in quite a long time, but that's just because of the weather. And we do have our numbers game live competition tonight because, you know, hey, you got to show up, show out, right? Paul Lyhander with you here on this Wednesday. Graham Hill on the ones and twos. Good morning, Graham. Need to call you. Happy Sticks and Foreigner Day to all those who celebrate at Walnut Creek tonight. If you what? see me wearing an ACC polo, buy me a beer. <laughs> if Keyword, you see Graham, buy, buy, me, buy me a beer. If you see Graham at Sticks and Foreigner, buy him a beer. All right. All right. Who else is playing? It's just those two, Sticks and Foreigner. Uh, there's one other person opening up. Okay, so a so a nobody. I'm sure it's a nobody. Uh, right? I I couldn't tell. Does you, it matter? All I know is the jig is up. The news is out. They finally found me, and you have found next up this morning there right here on 99.9 The Fan. Graham morning, is not Bob. wearing pants today. Good morning, Graham. I am not wearing pants. Nope. It's I wore okay. pants yesterday. Well, no, no, I didn't. It's okay. I can't remember the last time I wore pants. The, uh, or underwear, for that matter. Day 105 of the Grand Mystery in Chapel Hill is still ongoing. Who's going to start at quarterback for Carolina? You know, listen, if Mike Houston can name a quarterback and Manny Diaz can name a quarterback, Mac Brown, name your starting quarterback. What, are you better than them? Just because you're older, does that mean you're better than them? Yeah, you are. You I are. Don't, Let's just call it what it is. You are. I, I, you but, are. But I don't know if Minnesota's defensive coordinator is sitting there losing sleep every night going, Oh my gosh, we don't know who to scheme against. No, Mac Johnson not. or Connor Harrell? Probably not. Probably not. But I'm just, yeah. Mac Brown's earned that right, right? He has earned that right. If he wants to name a starting quarterback, if he doesn't want to name a starting quarterback, you know what? You be you, Mac. Have the grape nuts in the morning, have that black cup of coffee, roll out of bed and go, should I tell everyone? Eh. We'll wait till next week. Well, we did get an email yesterday since we are on the UNC football, uh, I guess you'd call it email list. Sure. Right? Sure. That head coach Mac Brown will hold his official uh, game week press conference this Friday before okay. the Tar Heels take the take Saturday off and then the following Monday off for the first day of classes. So Friday, maybe around noon. Yeah, listen, he's gonna have maybe to give we'll him, hear something. He's gonna have to give himself a nice earthy early birthday present, right? That Se- too. Seventy two years on the planet for Mac Brown, about to finish that next revolution around the sun. So you know, maybe that's the birthday gift, right? Announce the. Announce the uh, starting quarterback for the Tar Heels. But we will stand in the dark. It's okay. Let's talk about the Panthers, shall we? And let's just get it all out right now. If we're going to have happy feet, so to speak, on the offensive line, if we are going to cut left and set a cut right in formation, if we are going to miss coverage against a third stringer, or a tight end that we just, what, whew, what's he doing in open space and just broke out for 25 yards? Let's do it right now, okay? Let's all just do it all right now. We have one more game to do it all now with, and that is Saturday against Buffalo, a team that has hardly put up any points. You're not looking to make them look like supermen going into the regular season, nor do you want to look like that you are kind of the left-out member of the Justice League if you're the Carolina Panthers, right? Oh, yeah, that guy. That's right. Didn't he, like, save somebody from a bank robbery once? Yeah. You don't want to think about that. I want to be the guy that saved the city from everything. That's what you want the Carolina Panthers to look like. But as you go out and save the city, let's get all that noise out of the way right now, right? The hard counts, the happy feet, the missed routes, the fumbles, the jet sweeps that you lose eight yards in. Let's do all that right now. I've been really hard on the Panthers in the preseason. Really hard about it. Because the simple, silly things that they've been trying to work out, all the all the wiggles, right? I've got kids, and before they go to bed, they have the wiggles. So you got to get all the wiggles out before you can go to sleep and have a good night's sleep and get ready for school the next morning. That's what the Carolina Panthers have to do. They have roughly three weeks or so to get it all done. But really... To get it nailed in, it has to happen on Saturday against Buffalo in Buffalo. Dave Canales, Golden Retriever, the Carolina Panthers, the fixer, as some are calling him. He is open to seeing those starters get some runs Saturday. I'm open to playing our guys this week. Um, The same thing I told you after the game is true, though. We have to look at what does that group look like if we put everybody out there. 
are there enough of those guys to say, man, this is valuable for us to get these reps? Yes. Once we start to get into the depth of different positions, that kind of forces our hands sometimes on can we play guys or do we need to play them? You know, so um, again, today was a hard practice. Tomorrow is going to be another hard one. So uh, for me, I have to make sure we get through these da- these two days and I collect that information and make the decision as we go forward. No, 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 no. Play them. Play them. Let your starters get the wiggles out because they haven't had the chance. They haven't had the chance to have the happy feet. They haven't had the chance to go, oh, crap, I missed that one that time, or I broke a little bit too soon and that timing was just a shade off. Like, the timing works in different situations, but if you keep looking at the same background, right, you keep looking at the same people standing across from you, you already know what's going to happen. Show me the variables, right? Show me the, the fire drill, that also happens with the fact that your DoorDash delivery guy just showed up at the same time and you didn't have time to eat because you're taking a call from the house because the pipe burst. Show me that scenario. Don't show me the perfection that happens in practice. You can perfect all the things, right? What do they say? You know, like Perfect the small things so you can do all things. Let's see the all things now. Let's see the all things. Dave Canales talked about those starters. What does he want to see from Bryce if he plays Saturday? Operation, right? Just want to see things run smoothly. I'd want to see just the communication, you know, the in-between drives, conversations, all that stuff that is so valuable, you know. Um, and he's kind of been just, you know, around all those things as we've been doing it the last few weeks, hopefully to pick up some of those things. This is where you listen to the rabbit hole promo that we talk about when we promote this show next up every morning here. Paul Ihander, Graham Hill on the ones and twos this morning. This is that part of that rabbit hole, right, to where we talk about, well, Dave, has he ever been in the headset or the ear of Bryce Young outside of practice? Has this happened in a game? I'm not sure how important that is as opposed to the players getting on the field and actually playing football, Graham. I mean, the rabbit hole is that you could argue that Fans and us media members, too, are placing too much emphasis on preseason games and are missing the bigger picture. But at the same time, you're absolutely absolutely right. The need to get live fire reps in a game day setting in a once demoralized group, especially on offense, has plenty of merit attached. And it's going to sound crazy to say because the regular season hasn't even started, but I feel like Dave Canales is already walking a fine line as far as not being influenced by voices from outside the organization and sticking to his guns. He hears it. I mean, there's no doubt he does. There's no doubt he hears the noise. Like, it's unavoidable. I guess you could turn off your phone and, and not have those things, but you're driving into work, and you know, what are you listening to? You know, is it, is it podcasts? Is it us, sports talk radio? Three little is birds. It, is, yeah. Is it music? I mean, what, is it your own motivational book on tape? I mean, what is it? that takes you from point A to point B that you can actually lock out some of this noise. It is out there. We saw it early in camp, right? We saw it early in camp, some of the reports that were happening, talking about guys. And, again, this is where, you know, the guys that had to ride out last season are trying to really push that behind them. And I think a lot of us are. We all want to see movement from last year, but it's tough to push that backwards when literally the show just before us on Unsportsman like just talked about Bryce Young failing. Yeah. Like it was this open conversation about Bryce Young's failure and what would happen at the end of year two. Like they haven't even played the season yet, let alone played in a preseason game. What would happen if Bryce Young is not the guy? Like what would happen? Oh no, the sky will fall in and imploding. For Panthers fans it's like, all right, well year seven. Here we go again. Here's what happens. So I get it. I've been hard on them. I want to get it all out now, though. I want to get that, get pushed past things. There's always that conversation about, and I think we got past all the trades, right? I think we got past all that noise, the trades and the drafts and, and what had happened in the prior regimes. And I think we've pushed, not just think, we have pushed beyond that. But now we're trying to get into the narrative of the new year, but there are so many question marks about what is going to happen. You know, where there's this big fear about week one in New Orleans, in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. What will happen inside that building for this team if things don't go well? If we see more of that second, third, fourth, sixth verse at this point, it's just this big echo chamber, right? 
I, I think the fear is that you're just you're afraid that the Panthers are going to go out there and look like deer in headlights. Now, I, I know that sounds crazy to say, considering these guys are veteran players, or most of them are. Um, but you know, aside from the rookies that they brought in this past season or this past off season, but you're just afraid that not having any live game reps is going to come back to bite them in the you know what because there's no cadence, there's no timing, there's no you know. There's no communication that's really been placed inside the huddle just yet. It's going to be all at first glance. What you see is what you get with this offense, but you don't know what you're even going to see because you haven't even seen it in the preseason yet. Like there is a there is a sensitive part about here's the best way to call it being a parent, right? So being a parent, you're always looking out for your kids, whether it's on sports fields, whether it's at home or whatnot. But there, and then there's like the helicopter parent and the overprotective parent. And those are the parents that wrap the kids in bubble wrap. They're the kids that kind of put their finger on them and say, no, don't go too far outside because you're too many steps away from me to get up from my couch to go fetch you to come back in. And there's a little bit of that happening with the Panthers. And I get it. It's the preseason because your starters are your starters, right? Deontay Johnson says, my foot hurts. Damn it, his foot hurts. It might be broken. Pull him off the field. I need him. Zay Leggett, they have been babying this guy because they need him. They want him to play. The expectation, clearly, when you're a first-round pick, is that your ass is going to be on the field week one. Like, you don't have a choice. Like, you could be the you could be as dumb as a box of rocks, but we are running you out there because of what we invested in you and the place where we picked you. Whether that's fair or unfair to Leggett, question for another day. But that's the expectation that comes with that. So they are babying him as well. There are literally no tight ends right now in the in the Panthers room outside of Jatavian Sanders, who I drafted last night in my fantasy football league, by the way. And and see that's the other thing. I, I feel like you can make the art or you could see Dave Canales' side of things where you talk about playing more than sixty snaps in a joint practice and then seeing preseason action just two days later, right? It might be a step too far, especially considering how many injuries Dave Canales currently is dealing with on both sides of the football. But I mean I get the frustration, especially when you think about how strange it is considering the bat to back Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, are giving their starters time on the field, and you're seeing Patrick Mahomes make behind-the-back passes. But then again, that just might be – that might just come down to modern coaches and how they view the importance of preseason rather than rather than any other game. Justin Fields is getting play. Russ Wilson's getting play. I get that. That's a quarterback competition. and But to be able to put people out there, your the potential starting quarterbacks, you're going to get hurt. You can be overprotective. You can be the helicopter if you need to be. Let's hear from Bryce Young, right, the guy who apparently is going to fail – after just one season and not playing a full second season, he says, hmm, will I be comfortable about not playing in the preseason? I'll be comfortable either way. Um, again, I, I know that no, they're not the just ball. waking up and rolling a dice. There's a reason for everything. You know, they're, they're very calculated in um, what they're doing. They have our best interests. Are. They know us best. They've uh, had a lot of success um, throughout at different places. The staff, they're very knowledgeable. They know what they're doing. So um, I'll be confident in whatever the call is. I hope that's the public Bryce Young and the private Bryce Young in meetings is like, dude, just give me the ball. Dude, just give me a couple of runs. Give me a couple. Give me a Give me a couple. I was just about to say, can I, can I quote Tracy Chapman real quick and say, give me one reason why you don't want to be playing in the preseason right now Give me if something. you're Bryce Young? I get it. Trust. I get it. Be on the page. Be the company guy and whatnot, and that's public. I hope privately Bryce Young is like, dude, I need a series. Give me two series. Give me one series. I don't care. Just let me hand off the ball. Anybody. Anybody who's standing behind me, I will just hand them the ball. I'll flip them the ball. We'll work in shotgun. How about that? We'll work in spread formation. Yeah. I'll just throw the ball to the sidelines. I don't care. You would hope behind closed doors, Bryce Jones is thinking, God, if I have to throw the ball to Deontay Johnson one more time, or if I have to look across the uh, the offensive line and see Davion Clowney staring at me one more time. Because, I mean, think about it. I mean, apparently that joint practice against the New York Jets when he was going up against another defensive scheme. You know, I'm not going to say Bryce Young balled out, but he certainly had people, you know, turning heads. Yeah, they were loving it. Everyone was loving it. They're like, okay, great. Let's all see it now. Let's all see it. Let's all see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Not in a practice field. In a Big ass stadium with people drinking beer and shouting. And the PNS are going, third down. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Whatever it is. Something. Just something. So let's just get it all out right now. The wiggles and everything.
Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. The North Carolina Tar Heels men's basketball team will play the Dayton Flyers in the first round of the 2024 Maui Invitational, the school announced yesterday. The game is scheduled for November 25th at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. While speaking to the media yesterday, Carolina Panthers head coach Dave Canales said he is open to his starters playing in the final preseason game against the Buffalo Bills this Saturday. After this, the Panthers begin their season on the road against the New Orleans Saints on September 8th. Duke men's basketball national champions John Shire and Bobby Hurley will meet on the hardwood as opposing head coaches when Duke hosts Arizona State in the Brotherhood Run Charity Exhibition Game at Cameron Indoor Stadium on Sunday, October 27th at 6.30 p.m. Proceeds from the event will benefit Duke Children's Hospital. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. South Carolina put out a hype video for their college football team. This is actually getting back into the sports conversation. A couple days ago, they put out a hype video because they're doing a new uniform combo. Is it Hold My Hand by uh, Hootie and the Blowfish no, in the it, background? it is not. Um, but they go through this montage. It's like 90 seconds. It's this montage of them showing like old footage and like stars and whatnot in South Carolina. And they're using it. Uh, they're set, they set it to hold on loosely. Interesting. If you if you're familiar with Hold On Loosely, the song, the innuendo is off the charts. Okay? 38 special, just saying if you don't know the song, 38 special. Um dig into it just a little bit. It's just a weird choice, what? I think, for Carolina. South see, Carolina. See, I was sort of joking when I asked about Hootie and the Blowfish and Hold My Hand, just because when you go to a South Carolina game. The song that they roll, or the video that they roll out to kind of welcome the band on the field, where you know they're showing like the tailgates and you yeah. know, the yep. the little South Carolina girl with her parents is "Hold My Hand" by Hootie the Blowfish. Why would you not use one of your biggest alumni, who might be one of the biggest? Now I'm a, might upset some people, aka my dad, one of the biggest <laughs> musical artists <laughs> of all time, in, in your video package. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Just. Anyway. Maybe at the end of the season they can use Let Her Cry when the season doesn't go well. Let her cry. And those tears roll down her face. Uh, Love me some Hootie. God. You know what, Hootie, if you're listening, Darius, if you're listening, I want to play golf with you. Just putting that out there in the universe. Let's go play golf together. All right, Brian Flores. Yesterday we talked about him. Uh, him and the relationship with Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa when Flores was the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, uh, the Dolphins. He is now defensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings. Flores being a little bit more introspective about what Tua had to say about him. Tua called him a terrible person. Uh, Brian Flores had to elaborate a little bit yesterday. He had a news conference on Tuesday. Again, as the defensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, he spent roughly 20 minutes talking about his relationship with Tua and not about the Minnesota Vikings. But Flores, when he came out, he owned it and went full high road. I'm, I'm happy, genuinely happy, uh, genuinely uh, genuinely happy for the success that Tua's had. And I really wish him nothing but the best. Uh, and, you know, I think you know, player relationships are very important to me. I think that's kind of the foundation of coaching. And I got into coaching because I was impacted as a as a as a, a young guy by my high school coaches, my college coaches, my going all the way to Pop Warner. Uh, I got into comp coaching because you know, I want to make that same kind of impact, positive impact, pour into young people, uh, help them become, you know, as KO says all the time, the best versions of themselves. Uh, and you know, that's really my goal always in coaching. So. Flores, would, during this news conference, again, probably and admitted him to him, admitted, said, you know what, I was, a, I was a coach, and I tried to correct things, right? I tried to make some corrections. He had a high standard, but he looks back on it and goes, I could have done a few things better, but successful relationships come with that give and take. And during the news conference, and again, we're just presenting both sides here, and again, there's a lot of things that come with communication that get misconstrued, even if you're looking at somebody directly in the eye. 
It's tone. And my kids always talk to me about tone. Dad, Dad, you got out your big voice today. I'm like, I know, I know, but I didn't mean to do it that way. We're human, right? He said the same thing. Flores goes, I'm human. I get it. Now, the two haven't talked. Apparently, haven't talked about anything. But it should show you that a couple of Vikings players were there next to him as he started this news conference, suggesting that whatever had happened between, at least you can infer, that whatever had happened between Flores and Tua in Miami when Flores was the head coach, perhaps is in the same situation in Minnesota. I mean, yeah, we don't know the full-blown discussions that were had behind closed doors between Brian Flores and Tua, but I mean, it, it shows that Brian Flores is willing to move on. And, you know, Tua yesterday had kind of was very critical of the way Brian Flores coached, but it all comes back to a good relationship comes by, uh, or a mutual good relationship always comes back to mutual respect. And I feel like the head coach and the quarterback, especially at the NFL level, have to have the greatest relationship in order for the team to succeed. I had tough coaches. You know, I think a lot of you out there listening, you know, when you when you played sports in middle school and high school and some of you were lucky enough to tr- take that into college and, and even, you know, further beyond that, I'm sure you all had one coach, maybe a couple coaches, who knows? I mean, I don't think anyone's ever had like that perfect coach that was that was the, the leader and the mentor that you totally wanted them to be a hundred, like that they were always a hundred when that when it came to how they dealt with everybody, like everybody has that fault and that slip or whatnot. But we understand what it takes to be a coach. We also understand what it takes to be an elite player. And for those players who believe this, again, yesterday I said it out loud. If you say something out loud, especially along the lines of this dude's a terrible person, which, you know, Tua said uh, about Flores, and it, it, Flores, it hit him. There's no doubt about it. There still has to be a shred of truth there somewhere. But we are allowed to evolve at some point that if we keep dwelling on the stuff in the past, we will never get we will never be able to move forward. And there's a certain amount of honesty. There's a certain amount of rawness that comes with saying the things that you do. It clearly moved what Tua said, clearly moved Flores to have to kind of come out and go like, hey, this is, I'm happy for the guy. I've looked at myself. I've made improvements to myself. I've done a few things. I can't say all of everything about that, but, you know, I don't think there was a, I think for, for how this started and how this is going to end, it feels like I'm not sure I'm I'm going to be able to put this in words the in the best way possible, but it feels like there's still some growing up to do among both these guys. Yeah, that if you're going to come out and flame somebody, there better be a lot of stuff behind it, and you really you can po- you can look at recent success, and then you can look at where each person is. Flores is still in the league coaching a significant unit. It's the Minnesota Vikings. He's got a bigger, bigger hill to climb, certainly in that division, the NFC North. And Tua is a guy within a really solid system with Mike McDaniel, who is playing some of the best football of his, of his young NFL career right now. And also one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, so if you look at both these guys and what's being said, I'm sure there's still some growing up that has to be done. Like to me, I feel like the bit with Tua is that now he's kind of left himself with no room for error this season. Point taken. Is that fair to say? Surely, if he believes that this is the guy, if Mike McDaniel is the guy, it's it's a good thing though. It shows you the two. He's got some loyalty, certainly to McDaniel. This is a Andy Reid, Pat Mahomes, right? But he has belief in the head coach, but now he has to get he has to get true one hundred percent belief out of the Dolphins fan base. Well, I think the fan base will roast him alive if he doesn't live up to the money. That's the problem with getting paid is that uh, you got to deal with that too. All right, that's enough about that one. I think we're going to put uh, Tua and Flores to bed.